welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. It's been a while since we've done a, a trip here, and uh, I was trying to get us a trip that would take us further out east into the Going East DLC again. But, unfortunately, the only thing available in the city that I'm at right now is uh, something that will take us down south to Stuttgart. And we haven't done it yet, so we've been there before. So I figured we might as well go and do that while we're here. Uh, we're also going to have to get gas at some point. And I am now using the Track IR system. If you've seen my video about it, I made a short one about it. Um, it's very cool. It's not cheap, but it is a great toy, a great addition to anybody who enjoys, especially your Truck Simulator 2. Um, it has some tremendous advantages over the hardware-less uh, alternative face track IR. It's a lot, it's a lot more, um, I don't know, stable, I guess? Not that the other one crashed, but it's a lot less jerky. It seems to be a lot more um, reliable. Will snap to the center of your screen, so there should be a lot less uh, crazy moments. And also, I can have a sip of my coffee mug without it going completely haywire, which is really nice. Uh, and it's just so helpful to have. So, I'm very happy with it. It's a very good investment. If you enjoy these kind of games, uh, I suppose if you enjoy any kind of other racing game as well, it's a it's a really good investment. I think you'll get your money's worth out of it. Uh, I bought the uh, Track IR Pro Clip, I think is what it's called. It's a little attachment that attaches to my headset. Uh, the device usually itself just comes with a hat clip. I don't tend to wear hats, so that wasn't that wasn't uh, going to do it for me. I wasn't going to wear a hat just for that. It's too uncomfortable. This is nice because you can do the real quick checks to make sure we're not going to run anybody over right off the bat. So that would be not a good idea. We are in Kiel, which is incidentally my hometown. In fact, I was born here. But more importantly, my garage is here. That's that's why we came up here last time. Oh, stop it. Blinker. We're going to Stuttgart, and hopefully from there then we'll be able to find something else. And I think we're pulling agricultural equipment. Just a bunch of stuff. Let's take a look here, actually, what's on this. Yep, that looks, that looks like... I know we're probably going to hold up traffic here, but we shan't care. We have to get ourselves a screenshot for the thumbnail. So anyways, back to the track IR system. It's it's really neat. Um, I've actually been able to get it to work inside of Battlefield 3 as well. It's not natively supported. Like the, One of the beauties uh, about track IR with Euro Truck Simulator 2 is that you literally just... You just turn it on. And the game, you don't have to configure anything. It just, it just knows that when you're in the cabin, you want to use your noggin to look around. Which is good. You know, some of these, some of the games are more complicated to set up, I would imagine. It's natively supported in quite a few games, though. Pretty much all the uh, simulation games out there. A lot of uh, flight sim games. Uh, I was even told that Arma 2 and 3 support it. I've never tried that in those games, but inside of Battlefield 3, I was able to get it to work because it has an uh, included mouse emulator, which basically just pretends to be your hand moving the mouse cursor across the screen. And it works quite well, actually. But for now, we'll just use it here, uh, which allows us, uh, allows us to nicely look around the cabin and enjoy some of the scenery. I'm just looking at the clock. Looks like we're supposed to be driving at night here. Which isn't really sort of what I want. I'm not a big fan of night driving all the time. So we may actually sort of rest rather prematurely in some place. Have a good night's sleep so that we can drive during the day. This is definitely going to be a multi-part video. 
just given the length of the trip, but there wasn't a whole lot of options out of Kiel's. The problem is when you're up north there, there's not a lot of places to go. I'd been hoping that we could have gone somewhere to Rostock or somewhere over to the eastern part of Germany and then move over there from there, but uh, Stuttgart, we haven't been there before, so it's always good to check out some of the new places. Now, um, just today, earlier today, I watched a video um, by one of my other, I'll, I'll call them trucker friends, I have a couple of them that, uh, that play this game and we chat from time to time about our uh, adventures, uh, Rebel Forged, um, and uh, he had made a video about how he was upgrading his, uh, his company in your truck simulator too. That's kind of bad that I look out the window and have coffee, but... In any case, his company is actually the identical size to mine right now, which means that he had one small garage and uh, two drivers, uh, aside from himself, of course, which is what the situation that I'm in. Now, he did have one advantage over me, though. He has uh, already paid off his loans. I'm still paying off some of my loans. But I believe that uh, after this trip, I should be able to pay off um, at least two of my loans which would then give me the opportunity to take out another large loan. In any case, what, what he did was uh, he took out a 400,000 euro loan. Don't choke on whatever you're drinking. It's a lot of money. But he did that uh, in order to upgrade his garage. It's 100,000 just to upgrade your garage from a small to, I think, a medium-sized garage, which I believe... Um, oh, jeez. Did that upgrade the number of drivers you could have? I think it gave him two extra ones. I want to keep the lights on. Um, and that's what I want to do because, uh, you know, earning money in this game is somewhat important, uh, but it's also not that easy. It's not that easy if you're just driving by yourself because these trips are long, and when you don't have a lot of time to invest, you know, if, if you can't play like an hour or two every day, uh, some of these trips take a fair amount of time. As you've seen in some of these videos, some of these trips have taken 40, 50 minutes of real time. So, it takes quite a while to build up money. So the, the key really is, I think, to bite the bullet, um, borrow some money from the bank. Ah, oh, shit, I didn't even notice I was speeding. Uh, the other advice is to not speed. <laughs> You're not throwing money out the window. Uh, but more importantly then is, is to hire drivers and have them drive for you because they can earn pretty good amounts of money uh, every day and you know that way money is being made while you're driving by multiple people and it's you know it's been good uh, I haven't had any money problems uh, at all really I've been able to I think we might actually just stop here can we stop can we stop can we stop stop let's get gas here real quick so as I was saying the benefit of that is, you know, your, your company makes money even when you're not, well, you have to be playing the game, but you don't actually have to be, it's not all up to you, so, that's a really good thing, uh, right now I have three loans totaling somewhere around 80 to 90,000 euro, so as you can see on the right there, I currently have 76,300 euros, but, uh, we shall need some more. I don't have to pay them all off. I could, uh, I could just go ahead and take out the 400,000 euro loan anyways and say, screw it, we'll pay it off. But I think after this trip, I should be able to pay it off, pay off at least two of them. Make me feel better about myself, you know? You don't want to run your company into too much debt. But anyway, so then we'll hopefully... It's very expensive to not only upgrade your garage, so there's 100,000 euro just to make room available for extra drivers. Then there's the cost of hiring drivers, um, which, if I remember correctly from the two I hired before, is not that much. But you need to buy them trucks. They don't come with trucks. They're just people. And, um, you know, basically, I mean, if you think about it, even just an entry-level cheapest truck you can buy on the market is going to run you around 100,000. So right there, if I want to upgrade and get two more people, that's going to cost 300,000. So by the end of this, we'll basically be financially in the same position as now, but with more people earning money for the company. I'm, I might even consider, instead of upgrading that garage, opening a second one somewhere else in the country. That may be an option. It's more expensive, though. 
but I think uh, it, it that might be the way to go. The benefit of having multiple gar multiple multiple garages is that you can fast travel or quick travel they call it on the world map. So if I want to quickly move from Kiel to let's say Stuttgart where we're going now, if I were to open a second garage there, I could just at the click of a button teleport myself and my truck down there. Which of course, if you're looking for other jobs, it's a you know it's a good way to do it. It's a good opportunity to expand the possibilities of the freight market that are available to you at any given time. Of course, I could also spend some more money on upgrading the Scania, the Scania truck. I also toyed around with the idea of buying myself a new truck because, see, this is the thing: when you go shopping for trucks for your employees. Um, I may want to, I may, I may just hand this one down to somebody and buy myself a shiny new truck. We'll see. We will see. The timing of this trip is actually not too bad. Looks like we're looking at, uh, 10 o'clock at night right now. Uh, we are not that sleepy yet, so we'll drive a little bit into the night. Find ourselves a place to rest. It's probably where we'll sort of do this the uh it'll probably be a three-part video i'm just looking at how long it's taken so far and there's still nine hours left on the trip so it'll probably be a three hour video a three-part video which means we'll probably do the first third at about the 20 minute mark you'll have to let me know what kind of length for these videos you guys prefer um i used to think that I wouldn't watch any videos that were over 30 minutes long, but I have found that a lot of the videos of your trucking that I watch, I, I tend to watch them at work, whether it's at lunchtime or sometimes even while I'm working. I'll just throw it up on the second monitor and uh, and sort of have it have it there and watch uh, Jamie or Rebel um, drive and, and talk about their adventures and their, their day and just whatever they want to talk about. Um, and you know what? I, I haven't minded if it's a 30, 35 minute video. But, we'll see. We'll try to keep them shortish. We'll make them be too long. I'm, I'm positioned my foot pedal slightly differently than I used to. So, we'll see if that's. I, I think it might actually be more comfortable like this, but we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. This agricultural equipment is not a super exciting load to haul, but you know what? It's a paying load, and it will take us into an area of the map that we haven't been to yet. Love sticking my head out the window real quick with the track IR system when we're going up here, just to be sure. I know these lanes usually don't have to merge; they usually just get into their own lane. It looks like we're turning off again back there as well. Something else I've noticed uh, as a trend, if you want to call it, in your truck videos is uh, people not using the heads-up display for the second, for the right side mirror and the GPS. And I'm a little torn on that. I have tried driving like this without the side view mirror. I can still see it, I just have to move my head over and I'm starting to think that that may actually be the way to go, especially with track IR, it's not that big of a deal to look over there real quick. Um, it is a little bit more scary though, I will admit, because it does provide um, a pretty good added angle and uh, sense of awareness as to where you are on the road, having that mirror there. So I'm a little, I feel a little bit uh, naked without it there, but we'll see how it goes. Now, the GPS, on the other hand, I'm not sure if I want to turn it off. Not necessarily because of the GPS, even though on the Sc in Scania here, it's not very good in a not in a very good position. It's down there in the dash. But the thing that I can't really see otherwise is um, my sleep status. If you know what I mean, it's the one thing that I don't get to. S I haven't seen anywhere else down here. Don't know if that is listed anywhere. I don't see it. Uh, the fuel status is not a problem. That's down there, anyways. Let's turn on the big lights. So I don't know. I think I'm going to leave that up there for the time being. Let me know if you think I, I'm i being a bit of a chicken here, but I like seeing that there. I don't know. 
I'll blame it on the fact that I don't have a fancy steering wheel. I'll have to compensate somehow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Last time I did this, when I took a sip of coffee, it did not uh, move the camera that much, but it might be because I now have the microphone in front of my face as well. This track IR system is actually kind of cool. It's this little device. I really, I really think you should watch the video and just check it out and see what it looks like. But it's got these two green LEDs that tell me that I guess it has a good, uh, good sense of my head right now. It can track it well. Um, if I sort of block part of my my face or some area like that, then it um, one of the lights will go off. So that kind of gives me an idea. But it still works. You know what I mean? It's actually quite good. It's almost like it has uh, probably has redundant sensors, and I'm not sure exactly how this technology works. I just like it. That's all I know. Uh, that looks like a speed trap coming up here again. Yep. Radar controller in Butch. I don't like being in the very right lane because sometimes they seem to turn off rather abruptly. So, we'll stay in the middle lane. Now, we are driving on a large highway, so I'm not going to pull into this rest up here because I think we've got some more time before we actually have to sleep. And a little bit of night driving, from what I've heard from you guys before, is not bad. You don't want it to be all the time, but uh, even though it's dark, the game still looks quite good, I think. And especially when you have extra lights on the on your truck. That guy scared me a little bit. Some some of the AI drivers are a little bit um, unpredictable. And I'm being polite. But this guy, it just seems like they're cutting me off so close to it's like, dude, I'm driving a pretty big truck here with a heavy load. I can't stop like you can. So I don't know if you guys are into Battlefield at all. Battlefield 4 Beta came out yesterday officially. Have been playing it since 1 a.m. the night before. Um, because because that's how, that's how dedicated I am. I stayed up late with a couple of guys actually who were off on the East Coast. Stayed up even later than me. Um, and we've been playing it pretty consistently. It's only going to be available for two weeks. So we figured we might as well get our money's worth while it's there. And... Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's definitely a beta, so there are some issues to it, but uh, it's actually been running quite well for me, which apparently is not necessarily the average experience because I've, I've heard from a lot of people on Twitter and the like that um, they're having a difficult time with it, whether it be on the consoles or on the PC. But, you know, it is a beta, but there is apparently some concern over just how, uh, how beta, <laughs> how unstable it still is. But I guess time will tell. They have almost a month until the actual release date, and I'm sure there's going to be a day one patch, um, which people often complain about. People always say, oh, I hope they won't have a day one patch, and I, I always think that's silly. That's a sort of a silly attitude, because wouldn't you rather have a day one patch rather than not having one? I mean, if they know that there's problems, and they can release patches. You know, I understand some people have uh, internet challenges as far as having to download some of these large patches, but unfortunately I don't see that ever going away. I think patches are going to get more frequent and larger in size, but for the average gamer that's probably a good thing because problems are going to be fixed. And they're going to be fixed more timely than perhaps they are currently. I really don't know why I'm having such a hard time keeping the truck straight when I'm drinking coffee. When I'm driving in real life, that's not a problem at all. It's a lot, a lot more touchy in here. I do sure like these bright lights, so they, they light up the road like nothing else. So... I should also mention that probably the next rest stop is when I'm going to pull over here, but I want to mention some of the other videos on my channels. I know I'm not going to be self-promoting the whole time, I just want to, I, I, you know, i got to talk to you guys while I'm driving. I'm going to have to chat about something. I've been playing Alan Wake, and I've been doing a Let's Play of that. It's 
a really cool game, actually. I've been enjoying it. It's a bit creepy. I'm not I'm not one of those uh, guys who likes to play the, the horror games. That's not really my forte. But um, it's a high-quality game. I've been enjoying it. And, um, and then I've also been playing a fair bit of some of the EA Sports games, the, the new 2014, or rather just 14 series of NHL and uh, FIFA, both of which have just recently come out and have been really enjoyable actually. I've been I've been playing NHL 14 with Glittery Mocha, which uh, was a pleasant surprise to me because she didn't strike me as somebody be into sports games. However, I know that NHL is actually a game that she used to play when she was growing up. So a bit nostalgic there, plus it also features that uh, NHL 94 anniversary mode, which unfortunately you can't play online. So we're really bummed out about that. But um, I'm having a lot of fun with those games, actually. It's a, it's a really welcome change of pace, you know. I played so much Battlefield over the past year and a half that you almost forget about all the other great games and genres that are out there. So I find it really important that even if you're a big fan of one game or one genre, to branch out every once in a while as a gamer. Experience something else. There's so many great games out there, whether they're sports games, adventure games, RPG games, you know, whatever. Uh, and yeah, they're not everybody's cup of tea. Some people will never be into sports games or RPG games or strategy games or whatever. But, you know, I think it's worthwhile to give it a try. Some of that may go for uh, some of you simulation players who aren't really into FPS games of any sort, or even third-person action games. But, um... It's a really good time to be, to be a gamer. You know, and and everybody always says the summer is the slow time, but guess what, folks? Summer is over, and as I'm looking out of my window here, I can, I can, I can promise you that summer is definitely over here in, uh, in BC, in Canada, because, first of all, the, the giveaway sign is the air conditioner is no longer in my window ahead of me. I took that out, uh, yesterday, because, uh, I don't need it anymore. It starts to get chilly now, especially in the evenings. Uh, it's starting to get gray out. Hopefully we'll actually get a fair bit of uh, fall before it jumps right into winter. I like sort of the moderate temperatures and I don't mind the rain, so... Looking forward to some of that before we get into snow. Because we're going to get sick of snow really soon. There's some kind of turnoff coming up up there. Looks like we're going to be going straight and then making a loop-de-loop -loop to the right. And end up carrying, carrying on towards the left. I've actually been hoping that there would be a rest up here. It's always funny. Every time that I pass a rest up, I'm saying to myself, Ah, there'll be another one right around the corner. Because when I don't need them, they're right there. As soon as I uh, start planning ahead for rest stops, there isn't one to be found anywhere. And that's just my luck. However, we're not... We're getting there on the sleepiness meter. Not quite there yet. Ooh, I maybe should have gone one gear lower. Oh, we're, we're doing alright. This is scary, though, because I'm pretty sure this right lane is going to merge into the left lane. And I get a little... Bitty bitty. Oh, no, the left lane. Okay, good. That guy stopped. Smart move, man. Smart move. You know what, if I uh, move my head to the left, if I just sort of laterally move, that's better than turning it. Oh, now we've got rain. Driving at night in the rain. This really would be a good time for a rest up, especially now because it's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. And, um, boy, this, uh, well, I thought it was going to be a three-part video. It's definitely just going to be a two-part video. There's only just under four hours of travel time left. But maybe that's a good thing because maybe then I will include the upgrading of the buying of a second garage in the second half of this video. This will probably only be about 10 or 15 minutes worth of travel time. Actual trucking time. Make sure that nobody's there that's going to get squished. We avoid that turnoff. And yeah, 
rest up any time now would be nice. I swear we've been driving for four hours now without seeing one. If I get a ticket for that, I'm gonna complain. I don't know to who, but there's gotta be a department of rest stops or something that I can bitch at. Right? You guys agree, don't you? I'd be curious to know what kind of games you guys are into, uh, watching. Playing and watching, actually. Not so much, uh... I'm not so much looking for suggestions as to what other games to put on the channel, but more so, um, I'm curious... ...what you guys like to watch, and, um... ...how many of you actually play your Truck Simulator? I know that there's a few, I know there's at least two people who've been watching my videos... ...and then actually decided to go purchase the game afterwards, which I thought was great. Um, and from every indication that I've heard so far, they're having a lot of fun with the game as well. Which is, which is always good to hear. I was going to save this for the next episode, but there have been, uh, has been an announcement made by SCS, which is the company that makes this game, that they're going to be making an American truck simulator. Uh, I haven't looked at the details yet. I'm going to do that before the next episode, though, so I can talk a little bit more intelligently about the topic. But I think that's going to be interesting. Um, I, I imagine it would be fairly quite different, actually, from driving around here, and I'm wondering if they would... if they're going to cover the in, entirety of North America. I hope they actually cover... include parts of Canada as well, so... That I'm going to be looking forward to. There's the rest stop that we're going to be heading into. Uh, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't... if you're not subscribed right now. Uh, and also... Like the video if you liked it. While we pull over here to have a little snooze. So hopefully you had fun watching. I had fun driving. And we're going to be heading further and we're going to look at upgrading the garage or purchasing a second garage in the next episode as well. So hopefully you tune in for that. Again, I am Ole AK Chuck One and, and we will see you again soon.